Hey guys, this is Caleb with DSLR Video Shooter, and today we're talking about this awesome DIY triangle ring light. So here's the deal. Ring lights are really popular for makeup YouTubers and anyone who needs really even lighting and wants kind of an interesting eye light. The thing is, ring lights can be somewhat expensive, and let's be honest, they're everywhere. They're really boring. We've all seen it before. So um, this idea actually came from my wife, and we've already built one of these out of plywood, and this is kind of the Mark II, if you will. In a second, I'll show you the actual light, but I wanted to real quick show you the light quality you can get from it. The first thing you'll notice that's different from a ring light is if I take my glasses off, you can really see that eye light is really unique. Instead of a circle, we actually have a triangle because of the shape of this LED light. I also wanted to show you that it is indeed dimmable, so you can get it really comfortable for your eyes or really pump it up if you want to lower the settings on your camera. So I'm going to grab this thing and reset the lighting in here and show you the actual light unit itself. So here's the LED light we're going to build today. Obviously, it is a triangle with three sides, all wired into a little box back here that I can use with a knob to brighten up the light or turn it all the way down or off. We'll talk about power options at the very end. Building this light is very, very simple. The most complex part is going to be soldering up the LEDs and the wiring, but uh, I'll walk you through all of that. Otherwise, all of the construction you see here is with super glue and it works great, plenty rigid, especially for YouTube stuff like this. Total cost for this project was for me around $92. Um, you could save a little bit by using different LED strips. So without further ado, let's head over to the bench and start putting this thing together. To get us started, we need to build the frame. For this, I'm going to be using a bunch of these aluminum U-channels for the LED strips themselves. I got this pack on Amazon, and these and all other parts will be linked to in the description. But we're only going to be using six here. So what we're going to do is separate the six into pairs of two. I then line them up and put several dots of super glue along the edges and glued them together. Next, I added some electrical tape on either end just so we don't accidentally solder the wiring and the LED strips to the channel because that's not what we want to do here. With that, we can start applying the LED strips to the actual channels. There's two strips I would recommend you choose between. One is a high CRI, around 90 CRI, and it has a roughly daylight color temperature. This is going to be great. It costs a little more and it's not going to be quite as bright as the second option, which is a lower 80 CRI, which still looks great. It'll cost less and it'll be a little brighter. So you just need to choose between the two. For this project, I'm going to use the 90 CRI because at the distance this works well, you don't really need that much output and it helps with eye strain. Once you're done attaching these strips to the channel, you should have something like this and we're almost ready to start soldering things together. But first we need to attach all the different sides of the triangle together. To show you how simple this project could be, I only use little blocks of wood and super glue to attach everything together. If you're worried about the super glue failing, you could use epoxy. Honestly, I didn't have any problems with super strong super glue. So I had a couple different blocks of wood that I put on two of the three corners. Lined everything up, added the super glue, and attached the pieces together. For one of the corners, I'm actually going to, instead of using wood, add this little project box. This is a Hammond 1590B, again, link in the description. And this is going to house our dimmer unit, some of the wiring, for the end of the whole setup and the power input. So once again, I dropped down some glue and glued the box to the third and final corner of the light. I'd recommend gluing the box itself, not the lid, so that we can easily add and remove it and get inside later. You can wire this up several different ways. All that matters is that all the negatives are connected on each of the strips and all the positives are connected on each of the strips. So here you can see a diagram of how I put it together. But again, it really doesn't matter as long as as you connect all the positives and all the negatives and on one of the corners preferably the one with the box you'll have the final positive and negative wire i'd recommend using black and red wire as it's really easy to discern what's negative and what's positive if you're new to soldering don't worry it's pretty straightforward what i would recommend doing is what's called tinning where you add a little bit of solder to your wires 
and to the light strip before you connect them together. Then all you have to do is touch the wire to the pad on the LED strip, add a little bit of heat from your soldering iron, and they'll mesh together. Next, we need to wire up the dimmer, which is going to go in the corner box of the light. This is the one I'm going to be using. It's actually designed for small motors, but it works really great for dimming LED lights. So it's pretty simple. You have DC in, so negative and positive, and then there is a motor output, if you will, with negative and positive. The DC in is going to be the power source for the entire light, and then you're going to connect the positive and negative motor end to the actual LED strips. This unit is also great because it has screw terminals, so you don't have to solder anything. You can just stick the exposed wires into these terminals and tighten them down with the screwdriver. So that's a dimmer, pretty straightforward. The only other thing that's going in this box is the power jack. You could add a switch if you want, but I'm gonna keep it pretty simple here. So now we need to drill holes in the box for each of these items. I drilled one hole for the DC jack, one for the knob of the dimmer, and one other hole that we can feed the wiring from the light strips into the box. From here, things are pretty straightforward. I took the wire from the LED strips, ran them through the appropriate hole, and then I added the DC input connector. And as you can guess, I used super glue to affix the DC input to the box itself. Next, before we install the dimmer unit into that hole and tighten everything down, we're going to add our wires. So again, positive and negative from the input jack are gonna go into the DC in, and then the two wires, positive and negative, from the LED strips are gonna go into the motor, positive and negative end. Once you have everything wired up, take the nut off of the knob of the dimmer module, stick it through the hole, add the nut to the other side, and if you tighten it down real tight, you should be good to go without anything else. Finally, you can take the knob cover that comes with the dimmer unit and stick it on the potentiometer knob. From there, we can go ahead and add these screws to the plate, seal everything up, and now we're gonna work on the base and mounting point for the light. Again, to show that you don't need to be an engineer to make this work, I'm gonna keep it really simple. I super glued a scrap piece of wood I had lying around to the bottom part of the triangle, pre-drilled and glued and screwed an L bracket to the light, which should be plenty strong considering this thing is very lightweight, no pun intended. And finally, to mount the light to the light stand, I used a ball head and a wing nut to attach it to the L bracket. Just make sure you use something that's going to hold the weight and it won't accidentally flop over and let the light fall. So you have it guys, we have the light complete. Let's talk about power options. So we have that little input on the back of the light and we can use anything that has 12 volts and at least two amps or around two amps. So that little 2A that you'll see on most power supplies. Uh, a power cable is gonna be really cheap, probably five to eight bucks on Amazon. Otherwise, um, right here, what I'm using currently is this 12 volt battery. Um, it's gonna last forever with this light. It's got a simple little LED bulb and a switch to turn it on and off. Let me turn up the brightness of the light so you can see what's going on here. So this gives us a power switch so we can turn it on and off. And uh, all you need is a male to male power cable, which again is really cheap online. So you could use any other 12 volt battery, or I even found that this little adapter uh, worked really well. And this adapter will take five volts, like something like this cheap USB battery, and give us the same connector and 12 volts at the other end. So I'm going to go ahead and swap out the cables. Got it plugged in, I'm going to hit the button on the side of the battery, and boom, the light's back on. We can still dim it and do everything we could do before. Um, and what's nice about these batteries, these USB batteries, is they're really cheap. They come with really nice battery indicators on them. So I have a couple links to batteries I've used in the description. So lots of different power options. All you gotta have is 12 volts and two amps or more. All in all, I'm really happy with how this light turned out. Um, it's plenty bright, it's gonna work great and give you a really unique looking uh, ring light, eye light, instead of a normal traditional circle. Normally I don't light like this where everything's perfectly lit, but for makeup videos and certain videos, it works great. It's also just really easy to set up. You have the camera in the center pointing at you and you're good to go. And you can use this light like a traditional light and have it off to one side without any issues. You could also use it to get some really interesting B-roll and product shots. Um, so many different uses and it was a lot of fun to build and pretty straightforward. If you like this video and you'd like to see more DIY LED lights, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, you can watch fresh videos here at DSLR Video Shooter every single week. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.